the Rebel Collective Podcast. One even fair as a sun was shining. This podcast is sponsored by Kelly's Bar, Oswald Street, Glasgow. Live Irish music every week from your favourite singers and bands. Check out the Kelly's social media page for more information. How are we all doing, folks? And welcome to the first Rebel Collective podcast. It'll be a monthly music-based podcast that will feature various different guests of a rebel nature. We'll be getting to know some of their favourite songs and the songs that help shape the artists they are today and hopefully gaining a bit of insight into their background and influences. My name's Coach and I'll be your host for this month's Rebel Collective podcast. The first guest we have on the show is Connor Kelly. Connor's a musician that's played in the Glasgow Irish Rebel scene now for about eight years and although fairly new to the scene, certainly one of the most well-known Starting out as a solo singer, Connor played in bars across Glasgow. Connor went on to form the popular rebel band Glasnevin. Glasnevin went on to releasing one CD and also toured Scotland, Ireland, England, France, Germany and America. And there was also a great demand to see them. Connor is now back as a solo artist. He's a great singer, fantastic guitarist, great performer, all-round good guy. Connor, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Cheers. You've been looking forward to this, no? I have, I. I totally forgot about it until you reminded me about the to get the songs looked at, and I was kind of starting to panic a wee bit. But what songs? The the songs for all right. <laughs> 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 a long day. That's, a, that's true. That's true. You're a button man now. Uh, uh, anyway, go back to where it all started. Uh, back to the beginning. So, when did you first pick up a guitar? First picked up the guitar. It, must, it would have been in school. But um, I had one of my older brothers, pals, a guy, uh, Willie Allen, his name was. He used to um, play the guitar and sometimes he would come round with the guitar and they would sit and have, my brother and his pals would have parties. And um, he would bring the guitar round and sometimes he would leave it. They would leave it in the house. So he'd let me kind of play with it for a few days. And uh, he gave me this Oasis uh, songbook. This was only about when I was about 13, 14. And it had all the kind of the chords, but I had the, like, the finger diagrams as well, so it was easy enough to know how to get playing on it. Um, so it was about 14, then I picked that as my instrument to learn how to play in school and music. And um, also, at that point, for about five or six weeks, I, I went to... Uh, it was a class at the Macmillan School of Music, Paisley. Um, I went to learn there, but... It was a really basic beginners class they put us in, but I thought I'd, after a certain point I'd actually buy that, and they refused to move me up. So I stopped going and just continued to teach myself how to play. Um, did, the, did the singing come shortly after? Singing, that, came, the really singing came something? after it, and it was really strange. I always, I always said to myself, I, I can imagine I heard myself singing these songs when I was younger, the, the rebel songs in particular. But I always. <laughs> I always sang the songs, I depend, I sang the songs in the same style as whoever I heard singing it. So it was Dream like... Dream Gallagher or something? No, no, <laughs> even, like, even rebel music, I could listen to like, I'd listen to Pilgrims and I would try and sound like Charlie singing. I'd listen to Errol Hogg and Gary and I'd maybe try and the, the way Gary would deliver it, you know? But it wasn't until after a while you learn how to kind of dig it in. Aye, you, mm-hmm. you, find your, you find your own voice. You still, you still take yourself. I'm still doing that now, but I mean, at that point, I was kind of like, I mean, well, I may have a kind of something that's different from everybody else, you know. Okay. I was about 14, 14 year old when I first picked up. Okay, what about first gigs? Can you remember how they came about? Or? I, I got volunteered for it. I got volunteered for it. I, th- I thought it was ready because I said I was sitting in the house and I, was, I had a rough set list ready, basically, because I used to just kind of print the words out for the, the songs and just sit in my room and learn, learn all the, the rebel songs and then it came up to, it was coming up to Paddy's Day 2009 and uh, the Wigan Pen where they used to drink in and get the bus to the games uh, they never had anybody booked and I think they maybe left it a bit late to get anybody because as you know all the bands are well booked in advance for Paddy's Day yeah so I was sitting in the pub drinking after one of the games one day and my uncle Seamus had said to the man behind the bar, oh, there Connor will do the gig for you. 
and they had me, you know, 16 for a drink. Oh, they bother, I'll oh, fucking, they problem, <laughs> they bother me. You go well. And then I, after that, after that, I was kind of, there I was like, oh, I need to go and do a gig and play in front of people here, man. But uh, I, I, I remember the first song was a Foggy June. I started playing and I started to get a first line out. And I've, I've never used a song, but, but I was playing and I was standing first line and, down the glen one Easter morning and then forgot the rest of the words. Right away, right away and forgot everything. If I looked around and there was a guy, and I forget who it was, but I just remember him saying, nah, take your time, calm down. Then I just went back in there and that was that. Uh, never looked back since. <laughs> nah, deal. Uh, so how long were you doing that then before before Glasnevin appeared? Uh, I'd done that for about... That was in March 2009, and then I got in touch with Chris Cruikshank for the weeks, and um, he offered to, because um, I'd set up a Bebo page. Good old Bebo, yeah. Uh, good, uh, and uh, I'd set up a Bebo page to kind of, I was good, people were sending me kind of pictures of the gigs and all that, and I was just trying to kind of get stuff to promote and try and get gigs. And then Chris had saw the page and said, if you want to come up and do kind of any demo work, then you're... Um, more than welcome. So I did went up and recorded two songs with Chris and then he put us in touch. He said there was somebody that he knew that was coming to gigs who was a bass player who was looking to join the rebel band. And I was looking to get somebody else involved, you know, just to kind of add to the, the sound. I think it was December 2009 before Chris had organised a, a jamming session and uh, a studio up in the Tron Gate for me, him, Kieran, and it was supposed to be Jai F as well turned up. But Jai F um, phoned up and gave, I think we counted 14 different excuses as to why he never came that night. Yet. <laughs> and, uh, but that was, uh, I met Kieran then, and but for that Christmas, somebody bought Kieran, uh, Kieran had got a, a mandolin. And uh, so we were getting back to practice and week in, week out, uh, me and Kieran, and he says, I've got this mandolin, I'll maybe give that a go. And at first, as soon as I heard that, I says, oh, that'd be a great sound to have. Mm-hmm. So I says, never mind, I says, maybe just forget the bass. Because um, he was going to be really strict in the bass and following me. And I could, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite liberal with my chord selection. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to, when it came to the mandolin, it would give him a lot of kind of licence to, a, a lot of free reign. So it was it kind of, kind of gelled together after a while but that was we'd done our first gig in March 2010 and then the, uh, but that was still billed under just me and it was I think I don't think the name Glass Devon came about for a, a couple of months later we started kind of promoting that I think mean, it was a good, a, a good few months later it was Alan Quinn it should be in, come up with the name as well okay okay well just to keep on the, the Glass Nevin topic <coughs> you were chart toppers Aye. can you talk us through how that came about <laughs> That was all Kieran's idea, you know. That um, we wanted to record a song. We wanted to do something for the Green Brigade um, and the fans against criminalisation. I was made. A, I was more so for the Green Brigade because we we knew at a certain point that, they were, that um, their funds were getting exhausted, having to pay lawyer fees for this kind of thing that was happening. Where they, people were being um, penalised for want of a better word for. Um, uh, singing Republican songs um, at Celtic Park and other football stadiums in Scotland. So their, their money was all going towards paying their, their members' fees, uh, the loyal members' fees and all that kind of stuff. And um, There wasn't much money left for displays and stuff. I mean, they saw some of the stuff that they, they, they can, the boys can do with the, with the banners, with the, the banners and the, the, the pyro and all that kind of stuff and the atmosphere that they bring in and what they can do. So... We wanted to help them out. We knew the money was going towards the kind of. We were trying to kind of highlight what was happening with the, the, the fans against criminalisation and stuff like that. But a lot of that money was just towards to go to give to the group, and they could do whatever they kind of see fit. I thought you know, but that was um, that, but that was all Cairns' idea, and Cairns we made up to Chris Crookshanks again, and he recorded it. And um, the number did you get? See, I don't know. Um, I've been told different things. I think it got to number one. 
uh, in Scotland, the download charts, Monday at some point. Right. But I, I, I don't know, there's so many different charts now. There's like download charts and there's like album charts and single charts and there's, there's Scottish charts and stuff like that. It was all, it was, I don't know, I couldn't keep up with it. But it done well. I think, we, I think we managed to raise like nearly four grand for the, for the group, you know. Nice. But that was... Um, it's one, of, it's one of the ones it's um it was it, it was good to get um everybody was getting behind it it, it was another it was another case of everybody kind of banding together uh, for the one the one cause you know um it didn't matter who was singing it really it didn't matter what song it was it was a premise you know it was, yeah, it was yeah. people downloading it and getting money and as we gather in the chapel here in about these last few weeks Oh well they say be fair From our school days They told us that we must yearn for liberty Yet all I want in this dark place is to have you here with me No grace just hold your arms and let this moment linger They'll take me as I done and I will die With all my love I'll place this Before you come on Connor, we asked you to pick three songs that maybe influence you or meant to be something to you or maybe you just liked, I don't know um, So do you want to talk about your first song? What was your first song? Uh, the first song that I picked was um, A Rain Night in Soho by the Pogues. Um, you know, being a massive McGovern fan, a massive Pogues fan, uh, I just think that's his, uh, his best work. I've been loving you a long time Down all the years down all the days And I've cried for all your troubles Smile at your funny little ways We watched our friends grow up together Is it something about the song in particular that maybe struck a wee chord with you? Ah, uh, definitely, you know, but it's, it's one of the ones that was just I still love it to this day, and sometimes it's still like hearing it for the first time, you know. Mm -hmm. and that's why I don't try and include it in the set as often. Um, but you just, and I, I, it was years after I first heard it, you still learn a wee bit more about the song. I mean, but, but as McGowan had wrote the lyrics, and it was, a, it was, it was I was watching an interview with a guy, Nick Cave, who was a Australian singer songwriter, who was in McGowan's house and. He said to McGowan, have you wrote any new songs recently? And he's, McGowan says, ah, that's fucking... A big, uh, he pointed to the side and there was a big pile of stuff, a big pile of paper or thing made up and rolled up into wee balls and threw it away. And Nick gave and, and, and thing made, it's one of the songs that he pulled out was um, Rare Night and Soul. Um, and he put the music to it for him and... Uh, and it's mad, it's mad to think that that song could have been lost to the whole world, you know? It's good to, it's just, you're thankful for the stuff that McGowan's actually gave us, but I mean, you, 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 you think about the stuff that he's, he's threw away. But uh, that's definitely stuck out, that song, I think it's just a, a beautiful, beautiful song. It was strange you mentioned that. I had a good friend that was having a pint with Shane McGowan once, and I think to make small talk, he said to him, what about the fairy tale of New York, what a song, how do you write songs like that? He turned around and said, well, that's just one of the songs I've wrote many, many much better ones than that. Aye, aye, uh, that's, aye. that's right, aye. It's, it's so many discarded. Um, do you see a wee bit of McGowan in yourself, or a bit of the Pogues in yourself? Is there an influence there? Or? Oh, they definitely, I think they definitely influenced us. And I don't think they might, I don't think they influenced you maybe directly. I think you might have been, I think maybe a kind of detached influence in, in the sense that you might have listened to other bands, other Irish bands who maybe mm. were influenced by them, so... But I've, de I've speak for myself, definitely, you know, definitely. I just love McGowan, you know. I used to have a, a lot of people used to sleep, sleep with uh, 
a crucifix above their bed, eh? No, I had a poster of Shane McGowan. <laughs> Well, it's quite close to home, but you're doing the Irish stuff, you know. So. Oh, as he is, he is my god. Yeah. yeah. Uh, songwriting, he was kind of one of the better known songwriters that came out of Ireland, maybe in this day and age anyway. Do you, do you ever try a wee bit of songwriting yourself? Look, uh, I, I did. I get frustrated. I get I, I get so many ideas and I just don't know how to. I'm not articulate enough to, to put them all down. And I just get so annoyed that I kind of put the idea to the back of my head and just forget all about it and... Wake up the next morning, so I wake up the next morning. I mean, I've wrote some stuff absolutely st in some states, you know. And I wake up in the morning like, what, what was I talking about? You know, you feel as we should pick the doctor's appointment. You know, so something's not right here. Uh, and for your next song, where do we go for? Uh, the song I went for is uh, Tom Trouble's Blues by uh, Tom Waits. Wasted and wounded, it ain't what the moon did. God would have paid for no See you tomorrow If Frank can I borrow A couple of bucks from you To uh, It's one of my personal favourites actually uh, It's um, <laughs> well if you know your music coach and you know your music well, I, I you like to think I music, do you know, you know I can play three chords on the guitar <laughs> that's what you need but <laughs> once I heard that album and I heard once I, once I heard him I was trying to think when I was I was thinking of these songs that when you asked me for this um, Tom Waits was just one of the guys once you hear him for the first time you know that was just the, the kind of st either, you, either I think you either love him or hate him you know that kind of voice but um that song was just an absolute work of art. Um, some of the, his, his whole, he was another guy who you could just appreciate. It's in the same vein as Shane McGowan, the the ability and being able to produce such a high quality product in their songwriting, but at the same time been able to deliver it in the fashion that they did, you know, because there's a lot of songwriters out there, genius songwriters, who just don't possess that talent to go out and deliver, um, yeah, yeah. deliver, you know, the way that they, the way that they could. Well, you've but, got um, McGowan and Waits here, there's a bit of a recurring theme, we've got the hard drinking, songwriting, uh, you see yourself in a wee bit of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think the beer belly that I've got is probably speaks... <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can't kind of see that in the, in the podcast. But def, definitely a common thread between or a link between those two, um, in the in the, the sense that they're amazing um, songwriters. I'll take that after you. Bless you. They're amazing songwriters. Thanks very much. Uh, opening a beer. <laughs> opening a wee beer here. Yeah. Priorities. <laughs> Thank you. That they're. they're They've always had that. They, they were heavily influenced themselves, as you can see in the song, right? And they were heavily influenced by that whole lifestyle as well, you know, that mm -hmm. whole maybe down and out at one stage of their life, weights especially. McGowan's was a lot more kind of drinking, obviously, but Tom Waits wasn't really focused on the drinking aspect. His was more. Um, the drink was just a kind of side a byproduct. Of it. Mm -hmm. He was kind of. Folks are on kind of like mainline issues in America, and, you know, and that kind of stuff, and the, the, like the homeless thing. That's why I did. And, but I mean, the song I picked, Tom Trouble's Blues, that is all about them. Um, so the other song, the other name that it goes by is uh, Four Sheets to the Wind in Copenhagen. Yeah. Um, but it's just about, again, a, a down and out, you know, it's, it's just another down and out. I've always sympathised with these, this, this whole kind of storyline, these characters, and any kind of former, whether it be songwriting or any kind of music or literature it's always 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 empathise with the down and outs man I don't know why and obviously with a lot of Tom Waits stuff you're, you're seeing a kind of recurring theme about the the down and outs and stuff like that so with the entire back catalogue of Tom Waits songs what, why was that the one you went for? Um, I, I think that's his best work I think that's the best song that he's wrote and I think it's one of the best songs that anybody's ever Look, it's just an amazing story. Um, 
it's quite sad story as well. It really is, you know, it's, it really is. And we keep on kind of emphasising this kind of down and out thing, and that's, that's Tom Trobber's blues, you know, and and it's just this, you can, the guy, and he's, the guy really paints a picture. And you can just, you can you can picture this guy with the words, you know, just this, but he might be drunk and kind of belligerent and not making any sense and some of the stuff, and just got jumping for one bit, one thing to another. Mm-hmm. You know, it's as if this guy's telling a story. You know, that it's just an amazing, amazing, amazing song. I've, 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 um, of all the stuff that he's wrote, and he's wrote so many amazing songs, this definitely sticks out. I think is one of the best songs that anybody's ever wrote ever. And obviously, Tom Waits is a solo singer. I mean, he sometimes plays with a, a band, but he's a, a solo artist. You're a solo artist yourself. Do you see yourself keeping this going for a number of years? Maybe you'll be like Tom Waits and then oh, his time. No, oh, man, that guy. The suit and oh, the tie. And... No, I mean, I'd love it. <laughs> I'd love it. But imagine trying to get away with some of the gigs that we play. Imagine trying to turn up with a, with a, that whole kind of persona, you know, that adopted persona, you know, kind of. People wouldn't tolerate it. People wouldn't look. I don't think people in Scotland would look at you in an admiration the way they looked at him and says, "Oh, look, I'm mean, so cool." And I think they go, "Ah, look, that." Were you in court today, big the man? Fuck, like having a stage. <laughs> what you get yourself in for? You up in court this morning? You know what I mean, I can, uh, they wouldn't be allowed to do that. They're not allowed to do that. No, I wouldn't be tolerated in Glasgow. No way. Right, so we've had the Pogues. Yep. We've had Tom Waits. What's yep. song number three? Song number three is. In a big country, by big country, you know, and I've been playing it in my head since for the last wee while now, and I can actually feel myself getting ready to kick into action. My legs are going nothing. That's just what that song does to me, I mean, it's amazing. Well, it's about we listen to it then. Similar to what you they had been right. doing, and Tom Waits, and you know, I um, totally different, totally different, and uh, make it, uh, and I appreciate them for different reasons. Um, big country, that that song in particular, that whole attitude towards life, you know what I mean? Like, fucking come up screaming and stay alive, you know what I mean? Their whole that whole attitude towards life, like fucking life's brilliant, you know what I mean? And it is, life's amazing. You know what I mean, and it just this spoke to me. You know, get whatever happens, that doesn't matter. Just go and enjoy it. You know what I mean. I get put on the name a, a few years ago. I've not listened to them. I've not been a big lifelong fan. You know what I mean. But I can tell that my life for now on will be mm-hmm. as has been influenced by that that song, by Stuart Adamson's songwriting in particular. But that is just the pinnacle of his songwriting. And what big country we are. Is that song? It's just uh, as soon as he drums and as soon as that guitar kicks in, it's just amazing. It just stirs something in me. It just want, it makes me want to stand up you know, and just fucking come ahead. You know what I mean? Amazing. You tell me you're quite a, quite passionate about oh, this. <laughs> you're a rock and roller at heart, really. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I asked. I, I was kind of debating certain songs to pick for this when you asked me. Um, because there was a lot of ones that I didn't pick, like Rage Against the Machine and stuff like that. You know, right, I mean, right. was the influence by them. Then in the later years as well, it's System of a Down, System of a Down and stuff like that. You know, that, and st- all that kind of stuff did influence me after a while. I, but I'd get brought, I get brought up in the old classic rock and roll stuff. You know, I get mm-hmm. brought, I get brought up with that. But I mean, Big Country. That was my, that was Alan Quinn put me on to them uh, originally, and then but ever since then I just. I still listen to them every single day. 
every single day I still listen to them. And it's so, as soon as I hear the drums kicking in and the, the Stuart's boys and saying, stay alive, come up screaming mm. and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's just amazing. It's an unbelievable song. Uh, I, I'm saying it's a departure, but at the end of the day, it still is kind of mm. like Celtic rock. Do you ever see yourself doing that kind of rock thing, maybe? With... I'd love it. You know, I'd love it, but I, I don't know. I think... I think I, could, I think you get too comfortable. I think you can be in a real danger of becoming too comfortable in in your in your set, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, and maybe I don't know. It's, it's maybe it's maybe a it's maybe I don't want to try new things. Maybe you don't want to try new things in case it doesn't work. Yeah, but I mean yeah. that's no reason. That's no reason no to do it. But I mean I think I think that might be playing in the back of my head. Like oh, I mean imagine going on stage with an electric guitar and going to mm-hmm. some of the places that we play and. Never think about ditching the acoustic, getting the electric. I know, I'd love it. It'd be be amazing. It'd be great. I mean, it'd be good to maybe, maybe try and, maybe try and ease into it. Maybe Mm -hmm. look into the future, maybe try and bring in a guitar at some point of the gig and and see how how it goes. But but that whole, um, I I don't, I I don't, I'm really not sure. I mean, I think that would be maybe kind of, things would maybe transition into being like a kind of pub gig. Mm-hmm. And it'd be in a show, aye, you know. Aye, you know, aye. if you're wanting to be there, and like every song counts. Yeah, because yeah. you know yourself. Sometimes we can, we sometimes are just banging music for what's ever happening in the pub. Of course, aye. But I mean, going, going back to going back to the kind of Celtic rock stuff. Um, oh, I, I'd love it. I think it would. I think it would fit in well in a lot of circumstances in our, in our scene. I think it would fit in well. But um, to get that sound at big country go, and especially in that song, it would be. Um, if I could ever do anything like that with them, oh, I'd be a, I'd be a happy man. One even fair as the sun was shining. This podcast is sponsored by Kelly's Bar, Oswald Street, Glasgow. Live Irish music every week from your favourite singers and bands. Check out the Kelly's social media page for more information. Right, we've got a we've got a wee pop quiz. Go. Cool. Uh, what got you into rebel music? Uh, my upbringing, I'd say, uh, definitely the circumstances, uh, definitely. What rebel music or why rebel music over other genres? Sorry. Uh, I had substance, um, and I had a cause behind it. What was your favourite rebel band? Uh, that's a hard one. Between the Pilgrims... Come on, come on! I know, it's a hard <laughs> one. Either the Pilgrims or the the Wolf Tones. That'll do, that'll do. What was your favourite Rebel song? Oh, it changes all the time, but I need to say it's probably The Folly Dew. Favourite Rebel album? Uh, Marching Down Sackville Street. <sighs> Where do you see yourself in ten years? Oh, oh I don't know. Grave will be alive because <laughs> there's stuff that I've got planned for the next 10 years anyway. I'll be lucky to be. <laughs> Where do you see rebel music in 10 years? Well, it'd be shite if I'm dead 10 years anyway. <laughs> it'll be all right if I'm still here in 10 years. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> right, so, what are you, you doing with yourself now? What's going on with Connor Kelly on the music scene at the minute? Uh, I've taken a lot, I've taken a lot more residencies, you know. I, I, I was getting offered residencies a, a, a few years ago and I, I never wanted to tie myself down to any, any place in particular um, but I think I've got uh, bills to pay now and I think I had to grow up at one point and realise that it's all well and good uh, travelling and all that kind of stuff but you know I, I need, I've got uh, responsibilities now that I, 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 I kind of shuck so I've, um, I've, had to, I've tied myself down with a few residencies but I'm hoping that I can give me a, ch- a chance to um, try out new new stuff, you know, if I, I get comfortable enough in these places that I can um, maybe maybe kind of develop the set as well. Was, was there maybe, any plans for new material, record, recording new material? Hopefully, or? hopefully, you know. I'm, com- I'm set in these pubs now and I'm set in these places every week. And rather than taking a set every week to different venues, I can maybe develop the set and try new stuff to, diff- mm. to the same audience, you know, rather than trying the same stuff to a different audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that that could maybe 
maybe encourage me. Because I, I think it might just be, I might just be laziness on my part mm-hmm. uh, to not get the pen to paper. Because, I mean, doing this long enough, now and being in a, living long enough in the, in the scene, and you've, you've, there's enough material out there. You've, I've got enough material up there to maybe put something. It's just about getting it in the right order and being articulate enough to do it and being confident enough to go out and actually deliver it. Okay, thanks very much, Connor. So uh, we're going to go into the, the live lounge now. You're going to perform a right. song. Of, is that a song or two, two songs? I'll do a couple of songs, aye. Uh, I'll do... The first one I've picked today is um, People Get Ready by uh, Curtis Mayfield. Uh, I've heard a lot of different versions of this and I think it's just a, a great working class song. And I, I know there's a lot of element of the slavery and the, and the substance of that song, but I, th- I think it's just, uh, I think it appeal, I think it just kind of can go across the board to the whole working class or all across the world in general. I know that was the inspiration behind it, was um, uh, how the, the, the black, uh, black people were treated in uh, America. But it uh, definitely translates all over the world to uh, working class people. Uh, people that really, you know, it's, it's some coming, some better. Second song I'll do is uh, I'm gonna do my own my own wee um, version of Rainy Night Soul. I'll do my own wee delivery because uh, I think it's a great song and I've uh, 
I, I like playing it. I think this is a, a good wee chance to to record it and to let people hear them a bit after we spin on it. My my spin, and there's no better spin than that. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, thank you very much. Ah, well, thank you, man. It's been good. Thank you.
Thanks very much for tuning in, folks. If you enjoyed the show, don't forget to give us a like or a follow on social media. Just search for The Rebel Collective on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. A special thanks to Connor Kelly for being our first guest on the show and tune in next month when we have Paul Sheridan from The Wakes. Promises to be a great show. Thanks again for tuning in. Speak to you next month. One even as the sun was shining. This podcast is sponsored by Kelly's Bar, Oswald Street, Glasgow. Live Irish music every week from your favourite singers and bands. Check out the Kelly social media page for more information. Collected podcast.